Hi, I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at breaking out some device attributes into sensor entities using template sensors in Home Assistant. Now, fair warning, this process is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're going to be modifying YAML files in the Home Assistant configuration. It's pretty easy to get lost in the weeds here. So if you're not comfortable with the code aspect, be sure to back up your current setup before tinkering. I've done a similar video to this in the past, but I need to do it again for some new sensors. And I figured it's worth going through it and updating it so that it's up to date for 2022. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos, and that's usually every week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's affiliate links in the video description to a bunch of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past, and some other ways to support the channel, like signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link, or supporting the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So I really love that Home Assistant can display entities and the attributes of the entity. And it's really great for seeing more details like the temperature or battery level or even energy consumption of some gadgets that support these measurements. But in some cases, it might be nice to display some of these statistics separately. And in my case, I actually need some of this data as its own entity in order to then use it in another context. The data that I'm looking for is the energy consumption from a smart plug that I've integrated using local to ya. I'll head over to Home Assistant now and I'm going to find the item that I'm looking for. And I'm looking for this switch for the server. So if I click on that server switch, uh, we can see that we've just got on and off, but then in here we've got these attributes. And if I click on the exposure triangle, we can see that we've got the current at 684 milliamps. We've got the current consumption is 153.9 watts and the voltage is 229 volts. I want the current consumption as its own entity. I've also got the PoE switch and UDM Pro here as well. And those are exactly the same switch entities uh, with exactly the same attributes. So I'm going to break those out into their own entities while we're at it. Breaking this out into its own entity is going to make it a fair bit easier to graph in my Grafana dashboard. And in a future video, we'll also be taking a look at setting it up so that we can then make it available in our Home Assistant Energy Dashboard. So to break this attribute out into its own entity, we're going to need to take a look at our Studio Code Server add-on, which down the left-hand side is just here. So we'll open up Studio Code Server, and when it loads, we're going to open up our configuration.yaml file. And this is where it starts to get tricky because we're going to be modifying the code in this YAML file. Now, this is a relatively new setup and there's not much in here, but I have added a couple of template sensors to give us a bit of an idea of how this works. So let's take a look at the stuff that's already here so in our configuration.yaml, I'm adding the sensor domain and I'm using the platform of template for creating some template sensors. We're then opening up an array and inside that array, we're defining the different sensors that we want. So we've got this solar angle sensor that has a unique ID of solar angle. It has a friendly name of solar angle. It has a unit of measurement of degrees and a value template. And this value template is where we are extracting the data from the attributes section of an entity. So we're looking at the state of an attribute and the entity that we want to get the attribute from is sun.sun. .sun. And the 
attribute we're picking up is elevation. And the same here with the sunrise. We've got the unique ID sunrise, friendly name sunrise, and the value template. We're looking at the state of the attribute from the entity sun.sun .sun, and next underscore rising is the attribute that we're pulling out here. Now, if I wanna see the attributes that are available to me, if I head to the developer tools section on the left-hand side and on the states tab here, in entities, we can filter by entity and I'll filter by sun.sun. .sun. And we can see uh, in the right hand column here, we've got the attributes. So if we wanted to, we could break out an attribute for next dawn, next dusk, next midnight, next noon, next rising, which is we've already got broken out there and next setting uh, and the elevation we're breaking out for the solar angle. Uh, we can see the azimuth. Uh, whether it's rising and that's a boolean uh, and it's got a friendly name there. So if we wanted to look at, for example, the PoE switch, if I type in PoE here, we should then have switch.poe switch. And we can see there's the current and the current consumption and the voltage. So when we head back over to Studio Code Server, I'm going to want current underscore consumption. So I'm just going to copy that and head back over to Studio Code Server. So to create the new entity, I'm going to create a new line in here and I need to make sure that I'm indented correctly uh, and I wanna be at the same level as this uh, sunrise here. So I'm going to call this one POE underscore consumption and we're going to put a full colon. We're going to put unique underscore ID and we'll call this POE underscore consumption uh, and that unique ID just lets us uh, do some things in the UI rather than uh, having to modify the YAML code uh, to activate or deactivate some of these entities that we create. Uh, our friendly underscore name uh, and colon there is going to be uh, POE plus switch power consumption uh, and the unit underscore of measurement is going to be watts. Uh, we could just leave that as W. I might just make that watts to make it clearer. Uh, and now we need to enter a value underscore template and we're going to put uh, double quotes uh, and then inside the double quotes we're going to have uh, two open curly braces. I'm going to put a space and then two close curly braces and then start writing the uh, rest of that in here. So I want state underscore attribute. So we're getting the state of an attribute uh, and then inside brackets we are looking for entity ID and the attribute ID. So I'm just going to paste the current underscore consumption and then I'm going to type in the entity ID. I'm looking for switch dot POE underscore switch, I believe it was. And I'll just double check that by uh, opening up developer tools in a new tab. And I'll go to states and I'll go to POE and switch.poe switch is exactly what we want. So I'll head back over to Studio Code Server. I'm just going to check that this is all looking good. So our value template, two open curly braces, the state of the attribute from the entity switch, POE underscore switch and the attribute current underscore consumption. Uh, and then we are good to go. I'm going to create some more of these because I need more than just the PoE switch. I want the server and the UDM Pro. So I will go server underscore consumption and unique ID server consumption, friendly name, unit of measurement, and the value template. So for this one, uh, again, I'm gonna put uh, two double quotes, open and close curly braces, and state underscore ATTR, 
open and close uh, parentheses and a single quote and then a comma and then two single quotes. Uh, I want current consumption is the attribute and the entity that I want is switch dot server and I'll just double check that. Uh, so we're after switch dot server is correct. That one is now good to go. Last but not least, we want the UDM pro power consumption. So I'll go UDM consumption. And so once again, two double quotes, open and close curly braces and state underscore ATTR, open and close parentheses, uh, single quotes, comma, single quotes, paste in current consumption into the second position in here, which is the attribute that we're after. And lastly, the entity that we're after, if we go to developer tools, I wanna to search for UDM and it's switch.udm underscore pro. So I will type in switch.udm underscore pro and we have now created that. So I'm going to hit Command S on my Mac to save that. Uh, we probably don't actually need to do that, but so now that we have created these template entities in Home Assistant, we actually need to uh, reload Home Assistant in order for this to take effect. Uh, and uh, the easiest way to do that is to go to developer tools and on the YAML tab at the top, we can click on check configuration. And this is a very important step uh, and to make sure that we get this green configuration valid. If there was an error, we would not get this configuration valid uh, and we would be pointed to the line in our configuration.yaml file where we need to uh, fix something up. Because I've got configuration valid, I'm going to click restart and uh, it's going to stop all of my active dashboards, automations and scripts. I'm going to restart Home Assistant and when it comes back up in a moment or so, we'll then have our new template entities showing on our dashboard. So with Home Assistant Backup, we should now have some new center entities. And if we scroll down to the center section here, we see we've got POE plus switch power consumption, server power consumption, which I've misspelt server. Uh, and we've also got the UDM Pro power consumption in here as well. Uh, and we've drilled into server power consumption. And because we added the unique ID, uh, we can also see these advanced settings where we can either enable hide or disable these uh, entities where if we didn't have the unique ID set up, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, we can also allocate these to an area which you can do without the unique ID. Uh, and I will put these in the office. Uh, and when I update that, what we should see is uh, it will show up in the office here. So that's using template sensors in Home Assistant to break attributes out into separate entities. As I mentioned, this is going to be helpful to add the entities to our Home Assistant dashboard, and we'll also need these consumption entities in a future video when we try to get this data into our Home Assistant energy dashboard. It's also going to make graphing this data into Grafana a whole lot easier. Let me know what template entities you plan to use in the comments section down below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it's helped you in some way in your home automation journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider changing that now by hitting the subscribe button and then the bell icon so that you get notified anytime I release a new video. And that tends to be every week. If you're currently in the market for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description down below. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they seem to have the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I looked into. They hold a strict no-logs policy and they have servers all over the planet. 
And on top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your sensitive personal information while you browse the web, even on unsecured Wi-Fi. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. The contributions that you make through Buy Me A Coffee get put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.